Do you want to fight, dickless? I sure ain't gonna show you my dick. I don't know who's more stunning in this film. Swayze, Kelly Lynch, or Sam Elliott's facial hair. It's just so scruffy and gorgeous. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel and welcome to the second episode of First Time Watching. Per your request, after my video of watching The Lost Boys for the very first time, a lot of you recommended I watch Roadhouse from 1987 starring Patrick Swayze. We also have Kelly Lynch and the beautiful, glorious Sam Elliott. So I, I guess with the release of the 2024 version of Roadhouse about to hit streaming starring Jake Gyllenhaal and <laughs> Conor McGregor, who thought, I thought I would watch Roadhouse 1987 for the first time, just for my entertainment, and also talk about it with you guys, and, and my thoughts overall seeing it now as a 35 year old man, as opposed to seeing it when I was a kid back in the day. So the basic premise of Roadhouse, and it is so basic, but there is so much more to this film than its basic premise. When it becomes too violent at the Double Deuce Roadhouse, the club owner hires Dalton, played by Patrick Swayze, a professional cooler slash head bouncer to clean it up. But Dalton's early successes and budding romance with the local doctor enrages Brad Wesley, the town crime boss. When Dalton continues to defy him, the stage is set for a dramatic confrontation that will test Dalton's limits and decide the fate of the town and rip some fucking throats out in the process. So again, a very bare basic, bare bones premise of a film. We see Patrick Swayze as a bouncer at an old roadhouse. He comes to the Double Deuce, or as Sam Elliott calls it, Double Douche. Cleans it up, gets rid of the drug use in there, the drug selling, and also people that are stealing from the till when they're serving drinks and stuff like that, and, and essentially just revamps the Double Deuce. And again, Brad Wesley, who essentially has the town under his finger, does not like this at all. He essentially sees Dalton as, you must learn in on my town. And it is such an old school storyline. It's almost like a Western. And regardless of that, if you go into this expecting highbrow thinking man's film, you're not gonna get it. But if you want balls to the wall, beating the shit out of each other, oiled up, tanned up, mulleted up, beard up, you're gonna get it. And it's so fucking fun, this film. It's one of those things where I wish I had my mates watching this with me. I am currently home alone at the moment. It's just me and the dog. I could sum up Roadhouse in one word, and it's you. Yeah. You wanna talk into the mic? What's this? What's this? All right. <laughs> You're getting so heavy. There you go. <sighs> Good boy. <laughs> like, the testosterone in this film is fucking ridiculous. And the, the character of Dalton, played by Patrick Swayze, who just looks immaculate at this film, he's the, he's the stoic, quiet, soft-spoken guy that would rip your head out and shit in your neck, or in this case, just rip your throat out. And that is what has been, he has been famous for, and that's what we see at the beginning of the film. He has been known to kill a man by ripping his throat out. He then quits his original bouncing job and goes to the Double Deuce. And then we see him and Brad Wesley essentially going at each other. Wesley tries to one-up him by burning a friend's house down. They cut off the liquor supply to the Double Deuce. And again, there's not real much in terms of story. It's just about the incredible cast, the over-the-top hammy acting, the stuff stunt work. The stunt work is incredible. The fight scenes are great. You feel how raw it is. It's not over the top. It is very John Wayne-esque action, and I'm all for it. And as long as you are aware of that, you are going to have a damn good time with this film. Another standout are the one-liners. Like, the one-liners are just absolutely bombastic and at times hilarious. And unintentionally sometimes. And also brownie points, because the old man in the film is wearing Wells Lamont 1178 leather gloves. And if you did not know what they are, they are essentially the exact same make and model leather gloves they use for the parts four, five, and six Freddy gloves from the A Nightmare on Elm Street series. There you go. I don't know how I missed this. I don't know how this one was not on my radar when I was a kid. I, I feel like if I had the VHS when I was a kid, there's that one particular scene with Kelly Lynch, how she comes out onto the dock and joins Dalton just to look at the moon while they're naked. I, I would have worn that part of the VHS out like there's no tomorrow. Still would. This film is an example of how simple a story can be, but at the same time, if you surround it with a good cast, some okay acting. Like, I I'm not gonna lie, Patrick Swayze gives a damn good performance at the end of the film where something quite traumatic happens to him. And it's actually quite a pivotal and sad scene and he goes all out, he's crying, and I'm like, dude, like, good. Patrick Swayze was a great performer and I think in this, he essentially hits all those notes of being quiet, stoic, just using 
your facial expressions, but at the same time going full out with a really great performance towards the end of the film. The physicality as well. The guy is ripped to shreds. Like, he's oiled up, tanned up. Everyone's tanned in this film. It's ridiculous. Everyone was just tanned in the 80s. It probably seems like I'm blowing smoke up this movie's ass, but I thought it was going to be boring. I thought I had definitely missed the mark with this film, and I thought I was going to enjoy the remake a lot more. Granted, I have not even seen the remake yet uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. <laughs> Can't get over that. But again, just how simple it is with its story, everything else, it's got going for it. It's great. It, if you go into this knowing full well, you're not going to get a pivotal thinking man's story. You're just going to get some good old-fashioned 80s barroom brawling, action, mullets, just bombasticness, violence, and just a good old-fashioned revenge story. You're going to have the time of your life with Roadhouse if you have not seen it. And again, I don't know why it took me so long to see it, but I think I would have been one of those kids that would have just watched it over and over again if we were on TV or the VHS. And of course, that one particular scene with Kelly Lynch. And with that, I'm going to be giving Roadhouse four mullets out of five. If you were to rate this as like a tour de force, avant-garde, well-written piece, you'd probably give it like a two. But again, if you go into this film with your mates, you know, get the beers flowing, get the drinks flowing, get to Uber Eats, just get all your mates around who haven't seen this film before. If you have seen it before, even better, because you know what scenes are coming up. You know what one-liners are coming up. It's not a film you'd roast. It's a film that you cheer on. And there are a lot of times in the film when you're doing the... <clears throat> it's just a damn good time watching a movie. It's entertainment at its finest. It looks like the cast and crew were having a ball making this. The physicality with the actors is incredible. Can I also say, Ben Gazzara, who plays Brad Wesley, the villain of the film, the guy that essentially owns the town, the mob boss, is the biggest piece of shit ever. Like... He's not like your mustache twirling villain. He's not like Freddy Krueger. He's not like Darth Vader. He's just a bad, bad dude and a psychotic dude at that. And it looks like he was having the time of his life portraying Brad Wesley. Again, a damn good villain to go up against Patrick Swayze's Dalton. Another thing too, I saw this bloke in the film, the character of Jack played by Travis McKenna. And I'm like, I know your face. I don't think I've seen your face face, but I know your face. And then it came to me. He's the penguin's goon from Batman Returns. Uh, penguin? Killing kids, isn't that a little? No, it's a lie. <laughs> and it's just stupid 80s fun. That's all I wanted going into this, and I got it. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys, if you have seen Roadhouse. Like, most of you probably have, but if you haven't, I highly urge you to. It's a damn good night in. Get some food, get some drinks going. Yeah. Love your guts. And I'll catch you in the next one.